Hi everyone, Brianna Dignard here and welcome back. Today we're in for another scientist story time. So I want us to go back to a time before geology it was like really a real science, back when people thought that per the Bible the earth was only 6,000 years old. And funnily enough, I'm not talking about a time that was too long ago. I'm not talking about the 400s, the 500s, the 1400s, the 1600s. I'm talking about the 1800s. And today we're going to be talking about a paleontologist, a fossil hunter, and a scientist who changed our very opinion of the way the Earth works itself. I'm talking about Mary Awning. <laughs> Mary Awning, or Anning, and I might go back and forth between saying those two pronunciations during the duration of this video, was born in 1799 in Lyme Regis, England, a coastal town off the southwest coast of England that even today is still known as Jurassic Coast for its abundance of fossil discoveries that have been made there. And her family was very poor, so her dad worked mainly as a cabinet maker, but on the side to make more money, he climbed up and down the really treacherous cliffs of Lyme Regis in search of fossils that he could collect and sell to tourists who came to the town. And young Mary loved accompanying him on these fossil trips. Mary Awning received no formal education, but she was taught to read and she managed to teach herself geology and anatomy, which, very impressive. <laughs> So in 1810, her dad actually ended up passing away due to illness and injury from like a fall that occurred while climbing up and down those treacherous cliffs. And so her brother took up as an upholstery apprentice and Mary was encouraged to continue to sell fossil discoveries on the side to make more money to keep their family financially afloat, which was, which was a struggle. When Mary continued to collect fossils and sell them to tourists and in 1811, she, she and her brother uncovered what was described as a monster, a 5.2 meter or 17 foot reptilian thing that vaguely resembled a crocodile. And that's actually what people thought it was at the very beginning of when she carefully excavated this crocodile-like creature out of, the, out of the cliffs. And this is because that prior to just a few years before this discovery that Mary had made, people didn't understand or even think of the concept that animals could go extinct, that there had been animals that existed millions of years ago on the planet that didn't exist at the present time, or that animals that existed at the present time could disappear forever. And the theory of extinction or the idea that animals could go extinct was brought forth by, and I'm gonna pronounce his name wrong because it's French, I'm just gonna go with George, which is definitely not how you say it, uh, Cuvier, which is who was a French naturalist who proposed the theory of extinction and the idea that animals could go extinct. And he was looking for evidence to support this theory. What Mary had just found, this crocodile-like creature, which became known as the ichthyosaurus, was such evidence that like ichthyosauruses didn't exist on the planet today. It existed millions of years ago. And something happened between millions of years ago and today to make the ichthyosaurus no longer exist or go extinct. So Mary's ichthyosaurus, which was purchased by a local aristocrat, for enough money to feed Mary's family for six months and to start paying off some of her debt, ended up in the museum, the London Museum of Natural History, where it became a great subject of debate and discussion among scientists. And of course, due to being a woman and being poor and being in Lyme Regis, England, Mary was not really present at any of these meetings or debates or discussions, which is tragic. Um, but Mary, off in her little town, continued to make money through fossil hunting because fossil hunting was actually a very popular and like fashionable pastime in like England at the time. So people would come to Lyme Regis as tourists and would love to buy fossils and display them in nice little cabinets. It was, it was a very fashionable hobby to have, to have just a cabinet of fossils. So fossil selling was actually a very lucrative, could be a very lucrative hobby or a side business. So Mary continued to dig around the cliffs in Lyme Regis and she found her next big find was called a plesiosaur, another extinct marine reptile-like creature that had lived millions of years ago. And the authenticity of this discovery was actually debated. Georges Cuvier himself basically was like, this is a hoax, this is fake, this isn't real, th this can't be true, this is not a real animal. And upon actually examining the discovery himself, he discovered he was wrong and he was forced to admit his mistake in public. And then of course, like all this, all this discussion was going on and Mary wasn't a part of any of it. She wasn't allowed in the geograph geograph bleh, geological society of London. She wasn't part of this discussion. And many times the credit 
a, and kind of fame or associated money asso with that discovery didn't go to Mary, but who was the one who found, collected, cleaned, and assembled and sold the fossil, but the purchaser of that fossil discovery. It's kind of a repeating theme that <laughs> many people in science didn't get this discovery they quite deserved. So Mary found the plesiosaur, and then she also found the first pterosaur ever to be found out of side of Germany. And a pterosaur is a flying reptile. So today we kind of say pterodactyl if we're talking about a flying dinosaur, but they are using the word pterosaur. And she continued to find other various fossils, big and small, like a lot of ichthyosaurs, a couple plesiosaurs. And she even started studying coprolites or fossilized poop to learn more about kind of what these animals ate or potential any other clues they could find out about these animals and their lives and diet millions and millions of years ago. Very, very cool stuff. And while Mary didn't necessarily receive all of the credit and fame and reputation and money that she should have for all of her discoveries, she had many good connections within the geology field who were wealthy and who wanted to help her out. So they would auction off paintings of Mary's discoveries and they would set up grants so that Mary could continue to receive the money that she needed to keep herself, her brother and her mom financially afloat which was really, really nice of them to do. And I'm happy they did that so she could continue making all these wonderful discoveries that impacted the field of geology and paleontology. I feel like these videos always end on a sad note and unfortunately this one is no, no exception. Mary Awning died in 1847 at the age of 47 from a battle with breast cancer. And she still didn't get, at the time of her death, wasn't receiving a nearly enough credit for all the discoveries and contributions she had made to really legitimize geology as a science, not just kind of a hobby, in the field of paleontology and just the way we thought about the Earth. Instead of thinking that the Earth was only 6,000 years old, our minds really started to think about, wow, the Earth is millions and billions of years old. If it has all these life forms on it that don't exist today and that lived millions of years ago, what did the ancient Earth look like? These are some of the things that the scientists at the time started to ponder in large part due to a lot of Mary's uh, contributions and discoveries. And she was a really cool person. You can actually still see some of her discoveries and there's like a little exhibit or like a couple of signs dedicated to her at the London Museum of Natural History. So you can go see some of her discoveries still in the museum today, which I think is super cool. I saw them a couple years ago when I was in London because I just, I just had to, I wanted to see them. Uh, today's fun fact, that we're gonna write is that the word dinosaur comes from the Latin meaning terrible lizard and was coined by the scientist Sir Richard Owen. So please be sure to drop the rating for the fun fact in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, tell all your friends about Mary Awning. Go be a paleontologist if you wanna be a paleontologist. Go dig in the dirt with your parents' permission if you're a kid. Um, if you want to, do whatever makes you happy and I hope you enjoyed learning about Mary Awning. I post YouTube videos on every Tuesday and Friday and keep it sciencey.